Hello, everybody, and welcome to our live stream. It's yet another wonderful, wonderful Friday, and we're so excited to have three amazing people here joining us today. Today's going to be a really special live stream, guys. It's the first ever that I think we've had three people join us on a live stream, and there are people that are just huge supporters of communities, people of huge hearts, and people who are, I'm just so excited to introduce to you guys because they are making really the world a better place by helping designers, by helping developers, by helping everybody who's ever wanted to get your passion project off the ground, up and going within minutes, within days and stuff, within months and, within, and stuff within years. So I'm very, very proud to present to you guys the Locofy team. Uh, they're here today to share with us exactly how their product works, uh, how they're able to be so efficient and help us achieve the things we want to achieve. But more importantly, really help us understand the why behind why they're doing all this. What's the pain point they're trying to solve and really what is in their future that's going to uh, improve our world even more and more. So. Honey, I'll let you take it away. Please, I'd love to learn a lot about uh, you know, who you are, why you're here, what does this actually mean to you? Like, why are you here talking on our show? Um, and yeah, please just take it away. Thanks, Conrad, and uh, hello to everyone. Thanks for having us. Uh, we're very excited to share our story and show you what Locofy can do for you, hopefully. Uh, so my name is Honey. I'm one of the two co-founders of Locofy. Uh, I'm also the CEO, uh, but essentially I'm um, uh, you know, sharing the role of, uh, you know, the product strategy and the and the technology itself with my co-founder, Soheb, who's also on the call, and we also have Isaac. I'll hand over to them in, the, in, a, in, a, in a second, but uh, a little bit about the background uh, and how we decided to kind of uh, solve this problem. So my background um, uh, is, you know, very much in startups it's, itself. I've, I've been the chief product officer at three uh, Southeast Asia startups uh, before deciding to Locofy. And a big part of uh, starting Locofy came from our personal stories and, and our background and our pain points. So I met my co-founder, uh, Soheb, actually eight years ago. He was my first ever hire at, uh, at, a, at a travel startup where in 2014, we were still you know, trying to figure out mobile apps in this part of the world. And um, because of my, my, my gaming background, I wanted to bring gaming engineers because, you know, performance was a key sort of pain point at that point of time. And that's where I found Soheb and I didn't know he was going to be my lifelong partner in crime. Uh, but yeah, thanks to Soheb, you know, we, we built one of Asia's first editor's choice apps on Google Play. Uh, we went on to, um, you know, build another progressive web app, which was one of the first in the world. Again, Soheb was uh, the engineer behind behind the scenes. Uh, went on to make one of the world's fastest progressive web apps, which was uh, showcased at uh, Google I.O. Even Sundar Pichai and a few other top Google presenters, keynote speakers mentioned and showcased our product, which was built by Soheb. And then our, our journey kind of started from there. Uh, we knew we were going to work together. We knew we, we knew how to build quality products. Um, I went on to another fintech startup where we again built uh, uh, an editor's choice app uh, and then a health tech startup where uh, so Hebe again joined joined me um, as the lead engineer, um, head of engineering, and took care of all the apps. And his background of you know moving from uh, Kotlin to uh, Polymer to uh, sort of Swift um, um, React React Native kind of led to where we are today. And throughout the pandemic, we were doing a project which kind of uh, tested a lot, a lot of um, our, our skills and patience and everything and. And I asked Soheb, like, look, it's time for us to do our, our thing. And what is the biggest sort of pain point that you have? Let's go solve for that. We've solved uh, travel and fintech problems and health tech problems. Now let's let's uh, solve our own problems. So I'm going to hand over to Soheb, uh, and he, he can talk about uh, what that problem uh, was. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Honey, for the introduction. Uh, let me also share a little bit of background from my side. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Soheb, and I am the co-founder and CTO of Locofy. Uh, so I have been building mobile games, apps, and web applications for the past 14 years. And over the years, I got to work with different platforms, various frameworks, and with different industries like gaming, travel, and health tech. And my role was mainly focused on front end. Uh, so this idea of Locofy it actually came from our own pain point, like Honey mentioned. So in our previous job, uh, there was a time when we had to redesign the entire product, uh, including six mobile applications, three web applications. And 
like everyone knows coding the ui is always a tedious task especially when you have so many screens to build and honestly most engineers they don't really like creating ui interfaces or writing html css and uh, at that time we felt we can build something to automate the ui work to some extent and save the valuable engineers time so they can focus more on solving complex problems uh, so that is how actually we started exactly one year ago amazing oh honey it looks like you're muted <laughs> yeah sorry yeah so just to kind of wrap up that, that story itself like uh, if you if uh, you know people on this call you know your founders early stage engineers designers uh, i'm sure you felt the the, the pain that's felt around the world due to lack of um, you know uh, talent and and resources and we've been part of that sort of lean team building where one engineer is doing a lot and if you feel that you know you want to accelerate and you're doing a lot of uh, uh, grunt work, especially in front-end engineering and design, uh, would love to share with you how, uh, you know, we can hopefully help you in that problem a little bit. Yeah, amazing. Thank you guys so much for the intro. Uh, you know, I personally, I want to share a story too with the audience because they know me, they don't know you yet. And I really want them to know you because it, it's, it's a... It's a wonderful moment when you meet people who are truly passionate about the same causes that you're passionate about as well, right? And for us here in the community, as you guys may know, it's all about how do we help others level up, right? And of course, our perspective has always been like, you know, if we can level up our systems, we can level up our life. And it's all about just making sure that we have consistent routines and habits that help us continuously make a change, right? If you make a 1% change a day, that's 37 times, you know, a year. So there's a lot of like exponential growth when you have the right community, the right people around you to support you in, you know, your endeavors and the things that you want to accomplish. And I am just really, really amazed when I speak with people like Honey and Sohaib and also you get to meet Isaac, you know, everybody that's, you know, I've interacted from the local five team, you know, they understand community to a T. Uh, honestly, the way that they engage their community, their, you know, uh, I believe it's a Slack channel, correct, right? It, yeah. they're, they're, they're a place to, you know, really nurture anybody who might have a question about how do you turn their design to code, even just best practices of design, best practices of code, anything that goes on in there, they're immediately there to help. And they have so much energy and so much enthusiasm in supporting you, jumping on a call immediately the moment you need you need support. And well, sorry, I don't want to give you the wrong expression, not immediately, but you know, within a reasonable time, right? But they try their best to. And I think that is just so amazing. And you know, the eagerness that they have to want to help people. And even when we said, hey, guys, we have a design that we want to work on, right? We've been working on this amazing amazing digital garden idea that you know anyone from around the world from the coexistence family can submit these notes which even eventually grow into bigger pieces of content i can work on your articles you can work on my articles we can work together and build this collaborative knowledge hub and they're like yeah no problem we're going to help you with that we're going to get that done uh, and, and honestly I, I am just so impressed by their their acumen in terms of their you know design uh, philosophies their their code philosophies You'll, you'll see all that today and i am just so thankful for you guys to join us today and also giving us so much support uh for our upcoming project so i think without further ado let's get straight into like you know how i usually like to start these live streams which is you know really talk about the why what's and how uh, so everyone at home can really understand what we're really going for here in this stream and for you to understand as a viewer is this a stream that is going to be helpful for you? What is the interest that we're going to, what are the things that we're going to go through so you know what's going to interest you up front? So uh, basically what we're going to be doing today is we really have a few big whys and I'm really excited to share with you guys this. Basically the first one is we want to showcase the conversion of our Figma file to code live for the community digital garden. We want to really showcase like what kind of the process is like for that. It will be my first time seeing it for our uh, code as well. So. I'm just like you, I'm going to be a very, very excited viewer and very eager to see. Uh, we also want to share about Locify and their most recent updates. They have been through a lot of iterations in the past, I believe, six months, seven months? Um, yeah, five, five almost, yeah. Five Since months, right? Months five months. Yeah. And, and the speed at which they iterate, the speed at which they listen to their users is amazing. And I say users because really their users are amazing is in that they are are going completely free, right? Uh, to make sure that they are making sure that the uh, users are truly loving their products, right? There may be more paid stuff in the future, but right now it's all free so that you can do what you want to do and, you know, money shouldn't limit your passion and what you can want to achieve with that. 
So I really want to share the wider internet, you know, your story, right? The Localify story and the passion behind what Localify does. And it's just amazing. So what's going to happen today? We're going to hopefully get to working React code for Figma files at the end of the stream. Uh, we're going to understand the premise behind Localify and we're going to have some storytelling, right? Uh, because as you can see, Isaac is going to be here helping us uh, really make sure we go through that whole process painlessly. Uh, he's going to tell us exactly, you know, how the process goes. Um, we're going to ask some questions during live. And at the same time, we're going to have some nice conversations with Honey and Sonahabe. Uh, so we're going to have a lot of fun today. Really excited, guys. So. I think at this stage, we're going to jump straight to the how. Uh, maybe Isaac, uh, can you go ahead and uh, go ahead with your bits? And uh, please also give an intro. We'd love to hear about you. Don't Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks, Conrad. Uh, hey, everyone. I'm Isaac. Uh, I've also just uh, recently graduated, and I'm part of the Localify team. And when I was studying you know, computer science, one of the greatest pain points I had, as Sohib has mentioned, was to code out the UI. So when I heard about Localify, I was like, this is the company for me, right? This is the pain point that you know I really want to help to solve as well. So that's why we are here over now. Uh, we're going to do a quick demo on how you know we have converted the digital garden uh, landing page, which Conrad has shared with us, into React code. So I'm going to actually share my screen over here. And let me just do that really quick. And I'm going to open up our Figma file over here. So of course, once again, uh, thanks Conrad for inviting us on. We're really pumped to get to share, you know, what we have built with the Coex3 family. And we really hope that it's going to be a big boost in launching faster and doing more in less time. So let's dive right into this. I have Figma open over here. And there's this awesome landing page and content page, which was designed by Conrad and his team. And typically after this page is designed, you'll hand it over to a developer to build it. Or if you are the developer yourself, then you start coding this out. And normally it might take about half to maybe a week to code out this website. We're talking about pixel perfect UI, fully responsive with properly optimized HTML and CSS. So with Localify, instead of a week of development, you know, anyone can maybe spend about half a day to a day to take this design to production ready code and also get a live responsive prototype to go along with it. So currently, uh, Localify supports Figma to React. And inside of Figma, we live as a plugin you can install in one click. And once you have installed that, you can open up the plugin like this, hit over the plugins and open Localify. And that's the UI on like the Mac side, right? Uh, how would Windows side also be similar? You just click the plugin and then have it show up. Right. So in Windows, you can also right click and go to plugins over here, hover, and then you will find your plugins here as well. Fantastic. And I, and I remember you guys are expanding to more than just Figma, right? Like what's the, what's the whole philosophy behind, you know, supporting every single tool out there, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So Conrad, like, yeah, absolutely. Thanks for mentioning that because for us, we're, uh, for the next, like, you know, one year or so, our goal is to become the best design to code, uh, company, uh, platform out there. And we started with Figma for obviously, um, you know, because we realize a lot of our, um, early customers we talked to were on Figma. Uh, but our own designers have been on Sketch, and uh, we've gotten a lot of requests for Adobe as well. So we didn't really necessarily see ourselves as just a Figma to React company, but a, a design to code company. So we cover all the design tools, uh, at least the ones that are significant. And um, similarly, on the uh, code side as well, we are launching React Native soon. Um, wow. We are launching different frameworks like Gatsby, Next.js, HTML, CSS. We are launching a React Native uh, solution in a in a in a couple of months actually, uh, and we plan to cover you know Flutter, uh, Swift, Kotlin um, as we get the chance to do it. Amazing. So basically, you went to where the users are. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent, absolutely, no doubts about that. That's why we're running a free beta to kind of. Uh, we knew what we had to build, but now I think our users are guiding us to where they want us to go. Amazing, amazing. And I really resonate with that too. I mean, like that's the philosophy of what we're doing here, right? The tool really is just a tool. There are going to be a lots of tools out there. And whatever tool uh, you've decided on is basically what you know, you're know you using, right? And that can change within you know weeks to months, whatever it might be. 
And the same process for us is that because we're sharing systems of thinking, we're sharing ways to kind of organize our life, you know, methodologies to, you know, improve our productivity and make life a bit more fun, then any tool can support that, right? So I really love that, uh, you know, philosophy. And uh, sorry, Isaac, please keep on going. Yeah. <laughs> we're cutting in there. Not at all, not at all. So yes, right now we are only supporting Figma to React, but as Honey said, you know, we are going where the users are going. So do stay tuned for our upcoming updates as well. So over here in this Locofy uh, plugin, you'll see two main sections. Mm -hmm. Firstly, we have tagging layers over here and then drag and drop pre-built components. So drag and drop is a very exciting feature that's coming very soon. Mm -hmm. And we'd love to share a bit more about that later. So for today, we're going to be focusing on tagging of our layers. Mm. So what is tagging, right? So to a human eye, it's easy to look at this design over here and say, you know, hey, this is a button. This is an input field. But to the computer, all it sees is just some shapes and some text. So what tagging lets you do is to tell the plugin that say, hey, this is a button and we can generate the appropriate code for it. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to select the button over here and then tag it appropriately. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice that we support the most popular UI libraries, Material and Bootstrap. For now, this isn't using a UI library, so we can go ahead and hit none. So now Isaac, this has- Can I also trouble you to move sure. the window a little bit to the left, uh, at least this window here, because my face is in the way, <laughs> at least for Which the live one? stream. You can move it a little bit to the left, uh, a bit more as well, if you don't mind. Yeah. This one? Perfect. <laughs> sure, no problems, there of course. Go. Okay. Is everything visible now? That's great. Thank you so much. Awesome. Awesome. So now we have successfully indicated this layer as a button and we can go on to adjust a couple more settings for this button, right? So let me quickly introduce you to these three tabs that we have over here. So we have properties and inside properties, you can adjust the attributes for the tag. So for button, we have some simple properties like auto focus, auto focus, disabled state, you know, and if you are an advanced users, you can dig into the advanced attributes over here, right? And in the next tab, we have styling and layouts. And here's where you can take care of responsiveness, add, you know, beautiful hover states, animation effects, and so on. So I'm going to walk you through what you see over here. So in this top row of tabs, we have the different media queries for different breakpoints. So you can style your button individually for each uh, screen size. Over here, we have some popular screen sizes for desktop, tablet, and mobile. And if you require to change the breakpoints, you can always edit the breakpoint accordingly like this. Mm. Right? And in the next set of tabs over here, we can take care of the states of the button. So we have num normal state, hover state, press state, you know, disabled state, and so on. So in this case, let's add a hover effect for this button. Change the fill over here. And that's it. We have added a hover effect for our button. Now let's have a look at the final tab, Actions. And this is where you can take care of your user flows. So you can see a couple of options here, you know, scroll into view, maybe to a different part of the page, you know, or to change to a different page altogether. So in this case, after searching for an article, we might want to take it to the content page over here. So let's go ahead and choose change page and locate the page that we want to go to. Great. So now we have added a link from this button to that page over there. And the neat thing about this is that we actually sync two ways with Locofy, sorry, uh, Figma's prototype links. So if you have already created some prototype links in Figma, you know, we'll automatically populate that in our plugin and vice versa. So that's it. We have completely tagged our button over here and you can hit done. So I've gone into a bit more detail here for this first button, but you don't always have to tweak all the settings for every single tag. Let's do a couple more over here. Let's try out this input view. So we're going to tag it accordingly. Mm. So now, Isaac, one of the questions that I'm sure a lot of people who are watching will ask is like, so how many elements per page 
would you say needs this kind of tagging? Is it every single element or only the ones who have some kind of interaction on them? Like what, what, what is the kind of breakdown on how much work should I expect to do? <laughs> right, right. Typically, you would want to tag the elements which you need to have some interaction for. Mm -hmm. Lovely, lovely. So if we have more button um, clicks, then yeah. Yeah. Just to add to that, Conrad, actually, I'm glad you asked that question because um, one of the features that you know we we talked about with you, uh, a, a huge feature which we launched just last week, uh, was to solve this problem to some extent. You know, like one was we felt that this repetitive tagging can be a little bit like it can be improved. Secondly, not everyone may know what all needs to be tagged, and thirdly, even if they knew um, what all needs to be tagged. Um, if you're working with like let's say 20 screens or 15 screens uh, we are humans we will make errors we'll probably end up forgetting a few of them as well so uh, just in the next two minutes or so isaac is going to show you how we can solve for all of those by using our auto tag feature as well amazing so this right now what's being shown is about to be the thing of the past <laughs> yes sir amazing <laughs> okay excited all right so over here, uh, before we get into the auto tagging, uh, we are going to do a couple of manual tags here first. So as we can see, we have selected input for this uh, element over here. And I know that there might be some UI library lovers on the stream. So I'm going to show everyone how to what the flow looks like if you are using a UI library. So what you do is you select the UI library that you are using and then choose the variation that you have used in your design. And then you can go ahead and select the palettes. And over here, you can edit the properties which are available uh, that have been made available by Material UI. And then over here for styling and layouts, typically for most UI libraries, they actually help to take care of that. So you will not need to do any styling and layouts. And for actions, we currently do not support adding custom on-click actions for most UI libraries. They also do handle it for most components. So only for buttons, you'll be able to add some on-click actions for them. Oh, so, interesting. Wait, so just to understand then, if I'm using a UI library, I won't be able to do links or anything like that. Is that correct? Uh, no, uh, so sorry, Conrad. So if you are using like buttons, then you will be able to add actions like on-click actions. So, but for this, case we are using our input so mm -hmm. input doesn't have on click it mostly people use like on change for input so these are the kind of actions we will be adding in future got it got it and again like he's mentioned you know mature ui would already have you know when it's in focus then colors will change and etc cetera, etc cetera. yes things will already exactly happen. got it thanks for the clarification great so that's how it works for UI libraries. In this case, again, we are not using a UI library, so we can go ahead and hit none. So what you'll notice is that our plugin reads your design and automatically helps to populate some of these fields in advance. So for example, like placeholder, you know, we have already populated that with the text inside. In this case, uh, we are not going to be doing any styling or layouts, nor actions. So we can go ahead and hit done. Awesome. Let's do one more really quick before we preview our work. Mm -hmm. So for example, for these logos over here, you know, you might want them to be linking to a website. Sorry about that in the background. No worries. Someone really wants your attention. <laughs> <laughs> right. So we can tag this as a link. And we have a couple of options here. Open an external URL. So let's go ahead and add a URL over here. And open this in a new tab. We can also add a quick hover effect over here. And change this to a different color on hover and we're done. So let's do a quick preview to see how we have done so far. So as you can see over here, we are in the local five preview and this is actually already running on live code. So all of the components which we had tagged earlier, they are going to work like this. So for example, over here, we can interact with this input field and perhaps I'm interested in some productivity hacks. Wow. Right. I'm interested in that. 
I know most of the X3 family is. And uh, over here, we have our link, which we had linked previously. Let's click on that. It opens in a new tab. Mm. And then over here, our hover effect for the button, which links to the contents page. Oh, wow. Right, so we have managed to do all of that through a couple of tags over here. Mm -hmm. And as Honey mentioned, what we noticed, you know, is that tagging could take a little bit of time and we wanted to make this even smoother, mm. especially with many screens, you know, you might miss out some items. So just last week, we launched a new feature, which is auto tagging, and it scans through your entire design so that you can tag very quickly in just a couple of clicks. Wow. I'm going to show you how it works right now. So let's click on this page and flip this switch over here. And ta-da, we have detected the elements on the page, which you might want to tag. So we have detected a couple of buttons over here. Mm. So I'm going to go ahead and tag them real quick. So that's amazing. So basically, they find certain like edges to the layers, or is it the way the layers are named? Like, what is the magic behind this AI? <laughs> I'm not sure how much we can talk about it in this call itself, but um, <laughs> it's a bunch of things. When we look at image, we look at the nodes, we look at obviously what others are tagging. Um, and I think we're planning on actually doing a session about exactly how we went about uh, building this, but there's a lot of uh, models running behind this. It took right. about two, two and a half months of uh, our AI engineer, who's by the way, 22 years old. He just turned 22 yesterday. Uh, he's built this uh, along with Soheb and Isaac and yeah, we, we're still improving it, mm -hmm. but uh, we've already seen some real big productivity uh, sort of uh, um, impact uh, since we've launched this. That's also a really amazing point I'd like to highlight, right? One thing that I think you guys are doing really right is one, talking and listening to customers, no doubt, number one. But the second thing is also like making sure you iterate at scale, right? Based on the uh, user interactions, based on the way that people use your products. I think that's amazing. I think tracking is the only way to be able to improve, right? You track what's happened, you make a change, and then you track what uh, that change has resulted yeah. in productivity for your users. For sure, like I mean, we've been tracking, uh, like um, you know, user behaviors, but we've also been talking to our customers uh, with every opportunity we get, whether it's on the Slack channel, you know, async or uh, getting on quick sort of uh, product discovery calls, where we realize that we've already kind of helped uh, users go from design to code uh, quickly, right? We save the engineers like two weeks of time, and we do it in one day. But then it takes about half a day or one day to kind of get that code. And how can we reduce that from half a day to maybe 20 minutes or, or an hour? Mm -hmm. So while we were talking, uh, Isaac just went ahead and tagged three buttons. And he didn't even have to think about, do I tag a button? Do I not tag this? Mm -hmm. uh, where are all other buttons? So there's no sort of room for error and for thinking as well. It's just like super quick uh, mm -hmm. without a tag. Yeah. So then here's a quick question then, guys. Like right now, Isaac just went over head and did the tagging process, what kind of user would you expect to be going through that process? Is it a designer? Is it a developer? What kind of designer? Like, help me understand yeah. that. Yeah, super. Uh, this is a super interesting one because uh, our hypothesis was that, uh, you know, we are building this for ourselves, first of all, right? Mm -hmm. So obviously, engineer resources are difficult to find. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we build this within Figma so that designers themselves can kind of help with this process. But what we've seen so far is that there are some full stack engineers, front end engineers who, once the design has been passed on to them, instead of writing the code, they are going and doing this tagging process. Uh, but in many cases, it's actually the designer. And in some cases, it's actually the product manager who's doing this process. So we, we bet uh, on the fact that in the next couple of years or at maximum, let's say five years, design and front-end engineering will converge. It will not be uh, kind of separate functions. And, and a lot of new sort of graduates, a lot of new uh, builders and makers are not just, you know, like siloed as designers or front-end engineers. They are product managers who can do design and who can understand a little bit of code. So mm -hmm. in the long run, I think it doesn't matter who does this. Uh, as long as it's someone within the team. But we see like most freelancers are kind of owning the entire process of design and converting designs to code. In a small team, it could be the designer doing this um, because they're anyway spending half a day to a day converting this design to a prototype uh, on Envision or Marvel or Figma. Mm -hmm. And they're saying, well, 
do this instead in mm-hmm. half the time and not only do you save your engineer half a day or sorry half a week or a week of work but we also give you that prototype that you're looking for and we'll make it 10 times better because we'll give you a live prototype that runs on code it's responsive so you don't have to do that sort of uh, split effort um and it can all be converged in one place amazing so have you seen like uh freelancers on like upwork or fiverr like get a lot more jobs because they've been able to use uh, that's the goal that's the absolute goal um we have about 40 percent of our users are, are freelancers Amazing. and a lot of them are students and that's what we i mean our goal with this was to actually empower engineers uh empower builders empower designers to kind of get more jobs if they are freelancers or to move mm-hmm. faster if they are a small team in an early stage startup trying to build the whole world with just two resources right we've been there before <laughs> ourselves so uh yeah we are, we are look yeah, four months into the journey we are still trying to understand the use cases that our users are using it for uh, but that's the goal we would love for that to happen uh, conrad amazing and and also just to give some context for our viewers at home right like um something that you know why we do these friday live builds first and foremost is because i really want to show the world that it's very it's easier than you think to build something uh, that's your passion and to build something to share with the world um, every week we go live to really show you my live process and how I figure out certain tools out there, local tools and no code tools that have already helped us accelerate the development process to build what we want within minutes, right? Versus in the past, you need to be a developer. You need to know some really in-depth knowledge of code to build anything of value on the internet. Now anybody can do it, right? And when I say that is I, I want to give everyone the confidence that you know, you don't need to wait until tomorrow to build what you want. You can start today. And again, why I really appreciate the local fight team and why I'm so excited to have them here and showing us all this. And I hope that you've also uh, caught my enthusiasm as well, is that it, it becomes something, you know, almost um, magical, right? Where if I'm a designer and I believe that my tool is a paintbrush, right? And I paint, you know, a nice design, a nice painting, a nice, uh, a beautiful drawing uh, for myself. How amazing it is that within just a few clicks, just a few steps, right? That painting can become something so much more. It can be functional, it can be something that uh, can help millions, right? Uh, depending on who you want to reach. So I, I think that's just a wonderful, you're giving superhero powers, right? To uh, uh, designers, engineers, and everyone out there who uh, is just looking to build. So thank you for yeah, that. Precisely. Yeah, yeah. So we have about like maybe another seven to eight minutes to just show you how this becomes uh, the website that you want it to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, we have, we'll be happy to kind of take questions as well, uh, Conrad. I'm sure there's there's tons of questions coming in. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Please awesome. go ahead. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to continue with a quick preview to see, you know, all the buttons which we had just tagged over here. So we have the button over here, over here. So I had done all of that tagging really quickly. And now let's have a look at the responsiveness of the design. So you can see over here that the design has been fully responsive. And what we recommend is that in order to get better responsive code, you should apply auto layout to your design and our plugin automatically picks up all of the constraints and all of the auto layout settings which you had made and generate responsive code for you. So Conrad, from the design which you had shared across with us, there was a couple uh, settings that we had to do, a couple of grouping up items. So for example, this card over here, it was a bunch of items which were individually placed. <laughs> Yeah, there was like an image here, some text over here. So what we had to do is we just grouped them up and we added some auto layout settings for that. And similarly for a couple of these uh, items here as well. And then once you have done that, there's actually a limit to what uh, Figma can do for responsiveness. Mm. So for example, let's have a look over here. So we have applied auto layout, but at a certain point in time, the design still breaks down, mm. right? So here's where with Locofy, you can take care of this. So for example, with this section over here, we have two blocks on the left and on the right. And inside of Figma, we have them aligned horizontally, right? Stacked horizontally. So what you can do is with Locofy, you can go ahead. Let's tag this really quick. 
as a section and go to the styling and layouts tab, right? And for a breakpoint, for example, at 1200 pixels, when this design starts to break down, we can instead switch the layout from horizontal over here to vertical. And that's how we had managed to achieve that effect where it stacks at 1200 pixels in width. So let me go a little bit closer to 1200 and you'll notice that it snaps like wow. this. Yeah. So with Locofy, you can easily take care of responsiveness and you can fully control, you know, for every single screen widths and breakpoints according to how you want it to behave. Amazing. And that's also one thing that I really appreciate about you guys. Like, you know, I wouldn't say I'm a very prolific, like, uh, sorry, I am a prolific Figma user, but I would not say I'm an expert user, right? So like just being able to learn all these like auto layout things and just best practices of Figma, like, um, that's why I think tools like this are amazing because like it also teaches you fundamentals that you wouldn't have picked up otherwise, I think. Yeah. Oh, without a lot of, you know, study and, you know, experience. Correct. We actually, we have a couple of guides and articles. We've written these two to three minutes sort of tidbits of learning how to make your designs, mm -hmm. uh, you know, more responsive, just using Figma itself. Um, Locofy obviously works as a layer above uh, Figma and adds more value. We'll be happy to share those resources with you as well. Amazing. Thank you guys yeah. for that. So we are almost there and we are going to start looking at code in just a moment. So once we are done with the responsiveness, tagging, you know, adding of the actions, and you're happy with the preview, we can actually sync this over to Locofy Builder where we'll be able to start viewing code. So let's go ahead and sync this. Take a couple of seconds and now we can view code in Builder. Wow. Just that, huh? So welcome to the Locofy Builder. So this is still part of Locofy platform and it lives outside of Figma. And over here, there's a couple of things that we can do. So the three main things are to view and export your code. The next is to make components and props in order to populate our contents dynamically. And the third item, which is to view and share a live prototype. So I'm going to start off with viewing code. As you can see over here, we have our code panels. So we have React on the left and CSS on the right for each of our screens, right? And over here, you'll notice that we have some framework settings, which you can set. So we support TypeScript, obviously, the very popular um, setting. And we also have styling options and file naming options as well in order to meet your team's coding styles and standards. So we have our code over here, which you can view. Next, we can also make components and add props to them. So for example, if we have a header over here, which we want to reuse on multiple pages, we can turn this into a component, just like this in a few clicks, make components, give this a name and hit create. So you'll see over here in the code panels, we have a new component, top header, and this is a code for it along with the CSS. Now let's go over to the content page and turn this into the same component. Mm -hmm. So we'll do that over here, make component and select. So and now- I think at this point, I can ask a question that's coming from the audience, right? Like uh, someone's asked, you know, does it support component states, right? How does Locofy support component states? Uh, so, so right now we only, you can create components, you can create props, but if you want to add the props to your components, uh, it's something we are working on right now. So it will be available in coming months. Got it, got it. So right now, if we still want component states, we just insert that ourselves into the code. Yeah, so you can export the code and then uh, there are certain things you have to do after you export. I think Isaac will show you later. So mm -hmm. uh, so basically what we do is like we, uh, we help you with the UI side of things, but anything like lo logic related, it has to be like written manually right now. Got it. Uh, and I hear right now, so that means, are you guys going into the whole logic uh, path as well? <laughs> uh, yes, we have some ideas, like for example, the most common features like API integrations. Uh, oh, wow. Maybe you want to integrate like uh, 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 analytics. So it's going to be like all drag and drop. 
Amazing. Yeah, so SDK is like, you know, apps fire, mixed panel segment, uh, UI testing. We, like, we are very much focused on the UI and front end side of things, mm. uh, both on design sides, you know, including things like design systems and libraries, and then um, on the coding side of things as well. But uh, you guessed it right, we will eventually not just be a design to code company, we want to be a, a, a low code company that helps you go from idea to launch faster. So it will be including more than just design to code. Yeah, because like, I mean, just speaking from, you know, experience, like marketing wise, there's been so many times I want to do tagging on all the buttons, right? And I tell my dev team, I'm like, okay, this specifically, this page, this button here, this button here, this button here, this one here, I want all this tagged. And communicating that whenever you communicate something, something's going to get lost in translation, 100%. Sure. So the idea that I can now do that myself, right? Well, it's amazing. Oh, I, I will be able to do this myself. Yeah. It's amazing. Actually, that's, yeah, that's exactly what we want to do. The designer and engineer spend tons of time. You know, often this, this, this is what happens, right? You design something, it looks good. Everyone is aligned and excited. And then the final product comes out. Um, it works, but it's not exactly what you had designed and designers cringe about it and enge engineers don't want to, you know, fix those pixels and all because they want to rather focus on the logic. We just want to completely eliminate that back and forth and the designers, product managers have the power to do all of that as part of the design process and then let the engineers focus uh, and, and and you can, can be, um, you know, uh, a little relieved that the end product is exactly what you've designed even before writing a line of code. Amazing. Um, so Isaac, all yours. Oh, all right. Okay, I'll continue a little bit here over here. So we have turned this header into a component. So now we can avoid some duplicate code over here. I'm going to create another component. So we have some cards over here. So let's turn this into a component as well. So we go ahead, article card is a good name for it. So let's hit create. Once again, you'll see that we have a new component here in the code tabs. Mm. So I'm going to show you how we can add some props. For example, if we want this title to be populated dynamically, we can do that with a prop over here. So click on articles and we're going to name this perhaps article title. Mm. Also, one quick thing. Do you mind uh, renaming that instead of article card, maybe like uh, section card? Yeah. Sure, of course. Uh, let me edit this over here. Section card. Mm -hmm. No problems. So the code panels are also updated in real time. Lovely. So now we have section card as well as it has a prop, which is article title. And you can see that over here. Lovely. So let's go ahead and turn these rest of the cards into components as well. Use the same component, which we created, section card. So what you'll notice is that we automatically detected that some items such as the image needs to be turned into a prop so that it can be varied across the components. And we've added props automatically. Sometimes it might detect that these arrows are slightly different, so we can remove this if we don't need that as a prop. And that's it. We have added components as well as added props for them. Amazing. So how, how long would this process take? Like in terms of, cause like we know the tagging process is now immediate, basically uh, almost immediate with the local AI. Uh, how, how long will this process take me as a novice? Right. Yeah, so the, I mean, it depends on how many sort of components, uh, depends on your design, depends on how complex it is. I think your specific design is fairly straightforward, shouldn't take you um, more than a few minutes to an hour, I would say. Um, mm. I mean, it takes literally a click to create a component and a few clicks to make props. But um, yeah, just like we did with, with tags, we're also thinking about doing auto components as well. So that, you know, it's just one click, it detects all your components, recommends them to you, and you just have to say yes or no. Mm. So how do I choose like which uh, components uh, need to have props? Like w what is my thought process there? Yeah, so anything, yeah. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry. So, so basically, if you have like a reusable, if you see like reusable items in your 
different pages. So like for instance, for your design, you header is the same, footer is the same. So you can turn it into a component. So, uh, so after doing that, it will actually reduce your code, give you like more optimized code. And uh, for example, let's say these cards we are looking at, you know, the section cards. So for example, the data comes from a CMS or, an, or some API, then uh, we need to convert them to a different component and then pass all these values like image, the name of the art article and the text, and perhaps the link mm -hmm. uh, as a prop. Yes, any, anything that's dynamic in a component, you just convert it into a prop. Got it. Thanks for that. Yep. And also soon we'll be allowing you to duplicate this, you know, for example, with a map. So you don't have to create individual, turn each mm. one individually into a component. You can say like an array and then you can have like four of them. So that will oh, be also, you don't have a map code right now. It's uh, uh, right now. literally will convert as three different component, uh, three different instances of this component. Yes. Got it. Okay, great. Now let me show you our share prototype. So, over here, you can hit into preview mode, and when you share a prototype, you can do it via a link or by sending an email. And with this, you can actually easily get feedback you know, from your users, stakeholders, and conduct some user research. And it's running on a browser, so you can open it on anything, your mobile devices, tablets, you know, even if your fridge has a browser, you can open it over there. <laughs> And we really believe that this is the new gen next generation of prototypes. We call it real fidelity, right? And the main advantage is that you can experience the product just like the end user would, right? And you can get more accurate feedback, user research, instead of the image-based prototypes that feels a little bit artificial. You can see over here, productivity tips. Everything can be interacted with. And also with most prototyping tools, you need to create separate prototypes for each screen size. But with Locofy, you just spend time to create one prototype and you get it responsive for all screen sizes. And you get the code on top of it. So mm -hmm. that is what we believe is the next generation of prototypes. In the preview, are we also given like commenting tools? Like what's the best way that people can interact with that and like that give us feedback? Yeah, so that's coming. Um, we just wanted to first get the adoption of you know people using this sort of prototype before we even uh, allow for commenting. But commenting is definitely coming. It's like a no-brainer, obviously. But we also thought that in some cases, uh, you know, you send a, let's say, a design team sends this uh, prototype to a product manager or a, a CEO who's themselves a product person, and they want to, they have like strong feedback generally. We will also allow them to edit those small things for everyone to see so that you know it does it saves that back and forth again and again so those are coming soon lovely so instead of like pointing out do this do that literally yeah. just, they'll just do it and change the change the button to orange we'll allow them to change it and see how how bad that feedback is <laughs> <laughs> yeah i get it i get it completely right like being able to uh convince them through their own action <laughs> Correct, correct, correct. Exactly. Exactly. Amazing. Okay. And, and just curious, like, would there be like a before and after? Like, how would you kind of compare like A A B testing, right? How do you show A and B? Yeah, that's exactly what we're figuring out. Uh, you got it bang on. Um, there'll be multiple variations, obviously, sent to different people. Uh, if you're a research company and you're sending it to let's say some users and a different variation of it, we'll have to have some sort of version control, some sort of like comparison of uh, you know what it was before and after. Uh, and for the designers also compiling everything into one place as well. So that's what we're figuring out right now, but that's also where we're kind of talking to our users to to kind of understand what makes sense for them. Lovely. Thank you guys for sharing that. Yeah. Absolutely. So now let's head on to the main output, which is to export our code. So there's a couple of ways you can do that. Firstly, you can easily just copy the code over here. So with one click, you can grab this component and add it into your existing code base. Or you can also export the code in bulk so we can export all of the screens along with the components or you can export the individual components that we have created just now so let's go ahead and export this entire project wow and that's it. it that was so fast yeah, that's it <laughs> just like that absolutely so i'm going to open it up in visual studio code over here open this folder OX3 website. 
Perfect. So I'm going to fire up the terminal and we are going to run this. Oh, no way. Wait, you guys also like include the entire like, uh, <laughs> I can just run it direct immediately. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. So this is all packaged into a, like a, a proper React project. Yeah. I was expecting just like the code, but this is like everything, right? Yeah. Wow. If, if you want like uh, specific components, you can just export them, give it to your engineers if they prefer like a uh, component based approach. Got it. Got it. Amazing. So I'm going to hit NPM start. And here we have it. We have our Coex free landing page running on our local server. Fully responsive as we have designed it. Beautiful. Just like this. Amazing, awesome. amazing. So that's how we turn uh, designs into reality. And what's next after here is that you can take this code and connect it with your APIs, bind it with your databases. So for example, with this search field over here, you might need to call some sort of search API. And you can add this additional logic layer in your code before you deploy. The awesome thing is you don't have to start from scratch. You start off with pixel perfect UI already coded out, saving you about 50 to 60% of the time. And you can then pass this code to engineers to focus on the more complex integrations with the front end code. And for simple websites like that do not require any connection with APIs, you know, we're going to have let you have very soon one click deployment to popular hosts such as Netlify and Vercel. Mm. So that would be another option instead of downloading, you know, we might want, you might be able to deploy directly to Netlify and Vercel. And soon we'll also allow you to connect with APIs and do data binding from within Locofy Builder itself which means that for most Gemstack apps, you'll be able to deploy fully functional websites directly from Locofy. So you don't even wow. add you know, another logic layer on top of that. So like creating custom blogs, is going to be amazing is what I'm seeing, right? Because you have all those builders out there that try to do something like this, but nothing customizable, no customizable front end other than with a lot of pain, of course, right? We've all used WordPress before, but like this is yeah. definitely a step and above wow amazing guys Absolutely. yeah so that was a that was a demo um uh, and thanks isaac for that i think uh, one of the things isaac didn't mention earlier he's one of the founding members uh and we he was obviously attracted to this because of his own personal problem he was a founder himself tried to build three startups before with limited resources and uh, that's something we've all been through at some point of time, right we all have a design we may not have a designer or an engineer so we really look at at this, and I resonate with what you said, uh, Conrad, earlier, that um, it's actually easier than you think it is. You, all you have to do is get started. There's a bunch of tools out there. Locofy is obviously one of them. And uh, yeah, we would love to get in touch uh, when you try this product. We have a Slack community, so would love to support you, jump on similar calls where we can work your designs and guide you through that, through that sort of um, early learning phase as well. Amazing. So what's next for Locofy? Like every time I see you guys, things have moved 10 times already uh, faster. Right? <laughs> uh, what, what can users expect in the next few months, years, yeah. whatever it might yeah, be? Uh, yeah, so I think our current users can expect what they ask for. One of the biggest sort of uh, directions we're going into is design systems. And you, I think Isaac showed the drag and drop uh, widget where we think that, you know, for people who already have a design system where they have their buttons predefined, their drop downs predefined according to their uh, own branding. Uh, we will allow them to kind of host that from within Locofy itself, whether it's on Storybook or NPM or the local machine, and they can just drag and drop that into their design. Or if they're using any sort of design libraries, uh, you know, um, where right now we allow tagging, but we will also allow them to drag and drop that itself and kind of build a marketplace where if there's an engineer in Argentina who's built this beautiful uh, calendar component that you just don't want to build yourself and he's okay to kind of like make it available to the community, they should be able to, you should be able to access that and just drag it onto your, onto your design. So on the design side, there's a lot of work uh, that's coming up to help the designers move even faster. And then, you know, on the on the engineer side, uh, obviously, 
uh, a lot more frameworks are coming, like I had mentioned earlier, but also we're getting into uh, API integrations, data binding, hosting, deployments, uh, code repositories from within the local fire builder. One key aspect, obviously, uh, for engineers, designers to expect is we are not a no code tool, right? We, we give you the code because we want to give you that flexibility to uh, take that code and do anything you want to do with it. So a lot of our focus will go on understanding what our engineers doing with that code. How can we make it better? We stand for uh, g giving you the best code, you know, the code that the best engineers would write. Um, and that's where I think we're working on uh, just making sure that, you know, there's a lot more sort of customization uh, and a lot more of understanding your style of code itself. So we can incorporate that within within Locofy and, and kind of take it from just being a web tool right now to also web and mobile apps across frameworks. Amazing. Well, how can uh, people get in touch with you guys? Like, is there any like websites? Uh, what I mean, Locofy.ai, uh, I think is the website yeah. for you guys. I'll put that in the description, by the way, for anyone who's interested. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. already there, I believe. So definitely uh, check out their website, um, get started. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to leave the audience with uh, before we end for today? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, the website has all the information. Um, our Slack community is uh, open access, so it's on the website, literally on, on the community section. Uh, our plugin is completely free to use. It's free beta, uh, so you can start using it uh, anytime and ping us on Slack. But if you want to reach out to us, just email us at hello at locofi.ai. And one of the three of us will get in touch with you. And please don't hesitate. Um, we understand that this takes a little bit of time to understand. And uh, uh, we want to basically jump in with you on huddles and calls like we've done with our early uh, beta community. So please don't hesitate to get in touch uh, if you have any feedback or if you just need any help. Amazing. Thank you guys so much for being so generous of your time today. And thank you for helping us get what we want out of our uh, Figma file. I think that would have itself taken us, you know, a week to two weeks to do. And you've already saved us so much time and you're saving so much time for everyone else out there. And really, thank you for all the great work that you're doing. Uh, us builders, appreciate you guys so much. Designers, uh, I will also appreciate you guys. And uh, I uh, expect and look forward to seeing amazing things coming from your team uh, here in the future. Okay. Thank well. you so much for having us, Conrad. You've been a big supporter. You've been very generous uh, having us kind of in front of your, uh, your your community. And we are very excited to be part of the community and help. So thank you so much again. Lovely. Thank you guys so much. Take care. Bye. Take care, Thanks, Conrad. Bye -bye. Hope everyone has thank a you. wonderful uh, weekend uh, coming up at home. And guys, please remember, check out Locofy. And uh, have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you guys again so much. Thank Bye. you guys. Take care. Bye.